in an uh, emotional speech. In fact, Tim Waltz officially became the vice president nominee of the Democrat Party on day three of the convention in the upcoming U.S. election slated for 5th of November. He was cheered by the high school football team he once coached. And uh, take a look at this report that tells you all in terms of the challenges that he may face as he transitions from a small-time politi politician to the high-stakes electoral battle ahead of him. When we fight, when we fight, when we fight. U.S. Vice Presidential nominee Tim Walz, in unison with the crowd at the Democratic National Convention, the biggest stage of his career. The Minnesota governor said that it's the honor of his life to accept the nomination for vice president, adding that the Democrats will turn the page of Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump. That's how we'll build a country where workers come first. Health care and housing are human rights. And the government stays the hell out of your bedroom. Walz's walk-off song was Neil Young's Rockin' in the Free World, as he was joined by his family on the stage. While it is safe to say that Walls had a good outing during his big stage debut, there are several challenges that remain for the firebrand politician. The Walls has been catapulted onto the biggest stage. The American public is still getting to know him. In fact, reports say that about four in 10 Americans don't know enough about him. Attracting rural voters to the Democratic Party seems to be one of the primary reasons for Wall sealing the nomination. However, reports suggest that he has had limited access in rural contests. But he does seem to be doing better than the Republican vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance. A recent Washington Post poll on the two nominees' popularity shows that Walls has secured a marginal advantage among voters across the United States. The Minnesota governor has started off well, but the race is far from over. With Vishal Vivek, Parmeshwar Bhava for NDTV World. All right, Ray Locker, author and journalist, joins me live on the broadcast to talk to us about where the election is right now. The Democrat convention uh, all set for day four and, of course, Tim Waltz as well, who's transitioned from... Uh, a little lone politician to, of course, now being on the big stage. Uh, and Ray, that's my first question. You know, the reports seem to suggest that uh, one of his biggest USPs was that he could really uh, drive home the point and penetrate into the rural uh, areas as far as America is concerned. And reports seem to suggest that hasn't been the case so far. Well, it's really tough for a vice presidential nominee to make a difference anywhere. People don't vote for the vice presidential nominee. At worst, the uh, nominee is a distraction or a net negative. I mean, we saw that with Sarah Palin in 2008. Some people liked her. A lot of people didn't. Um, I think J.D. Vance is on that same trajectory. So I think, you know, Walls helps Harris somewhat in these rural areas. But when you look at the way uh, voting has gone in the last few presidential elections, a lot of rural America votes solidly Republican you know, and maybe Walls makes a percentage point or two difference in some of those areas, but I don't think much more. Mm. And and how's the election stacked now? You know, all that's left, of course, is uh, Kamala Harris's big camp speech in terms of accepting the nomination. Uh, but beyond that, all the big guns have come out in support of her. And the messaging has pretty much been the same, that they've They've trashed Trump, but haven't trashed his supporters. And that's a departure from 2016 and the basket of, uh, of deplorables uh, that Hillary Clinton had mentioned, isn't it? Right. Oh, it's a big difference. I think, look, the way this country succeeds is if you can talk to people of all different ideological persuasions. We're all Americans. We're all human beings. And I think this campaign and this convention recognizes that. Whereas I don't think that the Republican National Convention last month in Milwaukee did that at all. And if you listen to what Trump says in any of his campaign appearances, that's not the way he talks. So it's important for a successful campaign to be upbeat and to reach out to people and not try to rule out anybody. Look, you don't know who's going to vote for you or not. You have a decent idea, but people's voting decisions go all over the map. I mean, when you look at 2016, we had a bunch of counties in this country that had voted for Barack Obama twice in 2008 and 2012 and then voted for Trump. 
I mean, two diametrically different people. So it's really hard to predict how things go. But you don't win by ruling out a bunch of people. Indeed. And, and what are you expecting from Kamala Harris's speech? Because that's all that's left of the convention, isn't it? I, you know, I think she'll meet the moment. Uh, everybody knows it's a big speech. I'm sure she's been working on it. She's given big speeches before, none as big as this. But I think she'll meet the moment, and I think she'll have a good, uh, you know, lead-in act with some of the other speakers like Gretchen Whitmer, Adam Kinzinger. Um, so she'll come out on a high, and this convention will end up on a high note. And then it's off to ver a variety of campaign appearances in swing states. I imagine they'll hit those on Friday. And throughout the weekend, they capitalize on the media attention they're going to get. And then she's got to prepare for the September 10th debate with Trump. Hmm. And, and lastly, uh, it's, about, it's about reaching out to some of those undecided voters, isn't it? Because even in the 2020 election, it really came down to those uh, undecided voters and those swing states. And, and how is she going to reach out to those undecided voters this time around? Well, I think when you look at the ground game that the Democrats have lined up in these swing states, like Pennsylvania, they have 15 field offices. Trump has one. And those are people who are going out, knocking on doors and talking to people and getting, making sure people get out to vote. And when you have states like Virginia, for example, that has early voting, people know who voted and who has yet to vote. So they keep going back to the people who are on their list who haven't voted yet to make sure they get out and vote. Uh, that can be very effective. You know, I, I worked on some stories in 2012 when I was at USA Today about how well uh, the Obama campaign did that in states like Nevada. Keep going back to those people who haven't voted to make sure that they do vote. Okay. And I think that the Democrats, based on what I've seen so far, have a much better ground game than the Republicans do. And okay. in a close election, that can really make a big difference. All right.